as we grow and we improve and we're faster, better, stronger, everybody's going to get something. Business of Architecture, episode 324. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that doesn't get in the way of you doing your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practices, the world's only step-by-step business training program that shows you how to structure your practice so the complexity of running a business doesn't get in the way of you doing your best work. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today we speak with architect Darwin Fortuna, co-founder of Flow Design Studio based out of Salem, Massachusetts. Darwin has been a longtime listener of the podcast, and he said that this show helped him make the jump into entrepreneurship as a firm owner a few years ago. Today, you get to hear the story of how he started his firm, the challenges that he faced, and how he grew it to a team of seven in just a few years. So with that, here's my interview with architect Darwin Fortuna. Hello, Darwin, and welcome to the business of architecture. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Very excited to be here for sure. You're most welcome. And you said that you've been listening to the show for a long time. T- tell us about the genesis of Flow Design Studio. How did this enterprise get started? Um, I believe it started in 2014 um, when I first had my son. And uh, I, I realized by working at other offices that probably if I wanted to be involved in my son's life, I needed to, to sort of open up my own thing because there was a lot of stress and a lot of debt you know, that, that doesn't really change much, but, but I will have more control for my time, you know, and I will be able to put the kids to bed and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and the other thing was listening to your show, of course, uh, sort of fueled the passion because um, I found a lot of people that did this and, you know, had no clue of what, what, they, what they were doing and how to go about it. And they just kept going and, and built successful small businesses and practices and, and kept it all together throughout the process. Um, so that encouraged me and, and my partner, who became my business partner too. Um, I told him, you should listen to the show, please, so that we are on the same page. And um, and it happened. And, you know, that, that fire kept going. And it wasn't until 2017 when we incorporated the company. We, we were just, a, you know, a team of guys, a group of people just talking about for potentially opening a firm. But... <clears throat> um, on, on February 14th of 2017, I went online and I incorporated the office. I picked Valentine's Day. I thought that, that would be cool. Um, so it was our anniversary not long ago, actually, or third, third year anniversary. And uh, not much happened that year other than incorporating. Like we were just, you know, pushing it forward little by little. I wasn't licensed. So what happened so. between 2014 and 2017? What was that? <clears throat> So between 2014 and 2017, we began to speak about roles, speak about mission, speak about, okay, we need a website, um, we need articles of organization, what is it that we want to do, what kind of entity. So at this time, sorry to interrupt, at this time, were you were you working on your own now? Or was this why you were employed with other firms? I was working uh, with other firms at that time. And it we were just sort of, I was a student still at the Boston Architectural College too. So we, we were mm-hmm. just dreaming about the future. Right? And my partner also was a student at the BAC. So uh, at that time, we, and there was somebody else. Her name is uh, Shui Tin Wu. She's from China, interior architect. Um, so we kind of got together and liked working together. Uh, me and her actually happened to work at the same office. My partner, Marco Severino, worked at another office. And we would sort of do competitions, design competitions and things like that. And um, one day I said, why don't we really open a, an office? And they were like, yeah, someday, maybe. And then the next day I sent a meeting invite saying, okay, we have a board meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, well, are you crazy? So we actually did get together and started talking. And um, I kept pushing it, pushing it um during that time Shuetin Wood and me actually graduated the same year 2016 Marcos graduated uh two years later I believe yeah last year 2018 he graduated um and that's when you know we we clicked uh Shuetin Wood actually didn't make it to stay at Flow she actually went to another office um for all 
happens other than, you know, she loved Flo, but she just couldn't be part of it uh, because of her uh, status, her, her, her citizenship status, I think it was, sponsorship and things like that. <clears throat> so she couldn't really own an office. Um, and then we, you know, me and Marcos incorporated the office and uh, kept going. And it was mostly helping other architects more than anything. You know, people that need to help, solo architects that need to help and things like that. And we may extra so money. was this in 2017? Does this mean the first work you were doing was supporting other architects? That's right. So the first the okay. first work we did was for uh, an architect. His name is Greg Carell, actually the brother of Steve Carell, um, from from the oh. Office show. And um, and he he had, he got a police and fire station project, and it was just him and his wife, <clears throat> and he needed help. And he said, "Do you do drawings?" And I'm like, "Of course I do drawings. I'm going to be an architect soon," you know and so he hired us and we helped him with that project. Uh, we have helped him before doing renderings, just 3D renderings quickly. Um, that's the money we use to incorporate the company and sort of do all the legal paperwork. And um, <clears throat> I wasn't involved 100% that year because I was still working at another office. I was just, I really didn't know where the flow was going to make it. You know, that, that sort of in between where you're like, I don't know. My kids need, you know, consistency. I don't know if this is really going to work. But then at uh, the end of uh, of 2017, I really pushed for the ARES, <clears throat> passed most of them. And then at, at the middle of 2018, I, I had passed all of the exams, and that's when we really said, okay, we're real. You're licensed now. But I had quit my office on 2018. Uh, January 2018, I had passed four of my ARES. Um, I only had, had two left, and I had faith that if I made it, I, I would be okay. Um, luckily I had, I had a car accident. <laughs> I say luckily because we had no money, me and my wife, and we had two kids at that time, uh, my son and my daughter. And I totaled my car and that money kept us going. I didn't buy a new car. I just kept the money <laughs> to, to survive because we didn't know what to do. It was scary. It was so scary. My partner was always saying, I don't know why you quit your job. You should have never done that. My wife also said you should you should have never quit. You know this is this is a disaster. But uh, as soon as I got my license in Massachusetts, I actually got a license in Maine because they would do it in twenty four hours for me. NCAR would send the record and they would do it in twenty four hours. Massachusetts was taking like six months, and I just couldn't wait to say I am an architect. So um, <clears throat> so I did it, and that wow. same that same month, somebody called us for a project to do a dental office renovation. Uh, to a story dental office. It was a rehab. Um, and that was just like, wow, yes, we can do this. And we got how did that. How did that client find out about you? So I think, I think she, she, we found her on credit list. And I sent an email. I didn't know what she was looking for exactly. It's just a, a medical do- a dental doctor. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, you know, I sent an email saying, we saw an ad. I don't really know exactly what you're looking for. Would you mind telling us more? But it took months from that from that email to when she really called us. And I wasn't licensed, so I didn't know what she wanted. But I was like, well, the license is going to come any minute. I only have one more exam, and I'll be ready. So um, let's see what happens. Um, and, long, you know, if, if, if I wasn't licensed at the time, something that I had been doing is giving the work to the architect side. You know, saying, okay, here's a project. You know, I can keep helping you. Um, but you will be the architect on the project. Um, and they were very happy with that. So she, we emailed her. She called us. We had a meeting. And I got the license like that same week, like in the mail. I got the little card. <laughs> so I was like, yes, we can do this. It was exciting. <clears throat> now, to do a project like a a dental office what what was the scope of the work here was was it an entire remodel blowing out walls was it basically replacing the flooring like what was the scope of the project this first project so um it was a sort of abandoned brick building a, a portion of it was sort of not being used um and the owner had tried to do some work in it it was a brick brick building uh, the second floor was being used as a church, but it was actually an illegal church. Some sort of Brazilian group just took it over and made it a church. And she let them be there for a little while. Um, so we had to do <clears throat> a lot of work. There was a lot of, you know, de- demoing a lot of interior walls 
and things like that. Fire separations too, because it was two additions, two different buildings basically. So we had to uh, renovate that. Luckily, the owner has done multiple projects like this. She owns about three or four dental offices. And when she called us, she said, I don't think I need to pay a premium for this. Um, uh, the companies I've used are asking me for all these ridiculous amounts of money, and I don't need them, really. I know exactly what I need, how to do it, how to go about it. And I said, well, you know, I've done healthcare projects. That's, that was one of the things I worked on prior. Um, so I kind of know a lot about the healthcare environment uh, altogether. My partner had done dental offices, uh, his former office, so he could say he knows about it. Um, and we were very friendly with the fee because it was our first project ever, right? So we were pretty excited with that. Um, and she was very excited with us too. Um, and the project did take a while to get built. It's, on, it's still under construction. It hasn't been finished. Um, but uh, it was, so it was very intensive. She had drawings done previously by the dental equipment company that she hired. And we sort of, of took, took those, looked at them. And sort of they were thin with them, you know, like, okay, you know, let's verify this existing dimensions, let's verify everything and made it, made it real, you know, because they were just very schematic drones. <clears throat> and um, she made us actually, this is the first time I ever had to do this, go on site after we'd done all the design and with blue tape, put all the walls down where they're going to go and make sure that she was comfortable with all of the walls where all the mill work was going to go and everything. I had done something like this prior to the interior design company for furniture location and things like that. But two floors, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. So um, we ran out of tape and had to go back and forth to Home Depot to get more tape because it was just a lot of work. And then she had to us come back. And I'm like, can you just imagine we're moving that one foot? No, I want it down again. I'm like, oh, gosh. So let's do it. Of course, whatever you want, <laughs> we'll do it. And uh, so she's become a pretty good client of ours, too. She calls us for a lot of little things, too. So uh, we're, we're very happy. Now, a dentist, a, dentist pro, a dentist office project, it's, it's not the easiest project to do. I mean, and you guys literally, I mean, you, you graduated from school in what, 2014? No, I actually, so I, I went to architecture school in the Dominican Republic from 2008 to 2010, then finished, then started again in 2012 here after I got my English certificate from 2012 to 2016. So I had just graduated two years, late, two years prior. To, to yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, I mean, if I was two years out of school, I wouldn't have known how to put in fire separations. I wouldn't have known uh, how to specify all the specifications that go into a project like that. I mean, how did you cover the technical aspect of this project? Because let's face it, dentist offices aren't the easiest projects to do. You have equipment, you have clearances, you have even you have health codes <laughs> like, you know, hand washing sinks and everything like that. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're working with any medical gases. I don't know if she does stuff like that, but that gets even more complex. you got to bring in the MEP engineers. I mean, <laughs> tell me about how did you guys pull this off? I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, what so, happened here? Yeah, so my partner, the, most of the work that he did in uh, his former office was healthcare. And I did healthcare for about two years. We did, you know, emergency, emergency departments, uh, and, you know, ICUs, um, you know, and, and, a lot of those projects and there is a lot of, you know, coordination in them and a lot of those things involved. Um, so we kind of brought in that knowledge that we had. Um, and when I took the exams, the ARE exams, I was pretty serious about learning a lot about, about everything that there is to know. Um, thinking that, you know, one thing I love to do, I teach at the Boston Architectural College. I like to mentor other people. So I thought, well, if I know this stuff, I can teach it. But I also, as a young architect, just graduated, um, you have to show uh, sort of that, give that certain certainty to the owner, you know, to the client. You have to sort of show them, you know, your staff. Um, so I had to learn all of that as I went, but also learn it throughout the exam process, taking the exams as a, as a way of saying, okay, I'm really going to practice and I'm going to run an office and I have to do it, you know, responsibly. So we pulled it off, but the owner, the client really helped a ton because anything I would not know, she would bring it up, you know, on the table. The equipment company was still involved throughout the project. So, you know, all the, the equipment that they were going to bring in, they would tell us exactly what, what they needed and how they needed it, and we would mitigate it. <clears throat> and then the contractor that came on board uh, was pretty involved too. You know, we would go to the site, 
we were drawn, explain everything. Um, and then when things got quiet for a while, I was sometimes concerned. I'm like, you know, I haven't had a call from these guys. What's going on? But it was because everything was pretty clear. We spent a long time uh, on the drawings, making sure everything was, was there. Um, we had, with, with the permit process, that took a little while. Um, and it was because the contractor, when he went to pull the permit, he didn't bring all the drawings, the affidavits. He just brought a set of drawings. I think it was a progress set. It wasn't even the final. They didn't bring the affidavits. They didn't bring the code reviews. They didn't bring anything. And the inspector sent this list of questions. And, you know, I'm like, oh, the owner's probably going to be mad at us. But we had, we had everything. You know, what's going on here? Um, when we submitted it to the building department and they were very happy, I just had a meeting actually with the building commissioner of that town. It's the town of Everett. And he said, that project looks amazing. We're very happy with that project. And I was like, wow, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, yeah. Well, tell me about the evolution of your firm. So this this is was this your first paying project that wasn't a freelance job for other architects? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely was the first one. I remember this being the first one I stamped. So yeah, that, yeah. Must, that must be the first yeah. one. Uh, there was another and job it, that happened simultaneously almost, and it was a uh, young John Dominican architect who is he's, he's not licensed here, but he picked up this project and he wanted to partner with us, so we took it. But we really took it. You know, he gave us some plans, but we took it to the next level. Um, so that was the second mm-hmm. project, I guess. It was a three family uh, in Boston, and um, mm. we learned a lot there because we we hadn't gone through the process of, you know, ground up construction with an empty lot, you know, um, and things like that. So there was a lot of interesting things that we picked up there. Um, that one, that one's still not built. It's under construction. Um, things got slowed a little ever since. <clears throat> and, um, it was at the beginning, it was me full time. And there was somebody, uh, who has become very important to the office. It's, his name is Julio Gutierrez. He's from Mexico. He and I actually worked together on another office, um, and 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 he sort of believed in whatever flow was, so he quit his office where he worked and went to work at a restaurant. And the reason why he went to work at a, at a restaurant, he didn't even want to do architecture anymore. It was because there was just no passion where we were. The office just was. Um, it was a lot of public work too, so it wasn't really fun. I, it really wasn't fun. So I told him, okay, do you want to come back? It was kind of like me calling, you know, people and say, do you want to come back to the field? You know, let's do a competition. So we did a competition. We worked together very happily. And then I said, okay, there is not much promise in here yet, but we want to be a part of flow. And he said, absolutely, you know, and no, don't worry about the money that way. I just want to do this because I want that fire to grow. Like I, he had the passion and they didn't want it to die. So, uh, that's when I quit my office and I was working out of my basement and he was working out of my basement too. Both of us. Um, <laughs> we'd laugh about it cause we were making fun of, about this, uh, during our third anniversary on February 14th, that our desks were so close. We would bump into each other. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. really small. And, um, so he kept working at the restaurant and then also working at flow. And then the time, the time came where another office gave him a really good offer. And he came to me and said, Darwin, this office, it's a very nice office, actually. Uh, I'm a plum there, based out of Cambridge. Very, very nice office. Um, and, you know, he was in between choosing. He kept, to, he wanted to go with both of us. He explained that he was going to be working at both offices to uh, both of us. Um, and January of 2018, I said to him, come in full time. The numbers don't prove we can afford you, but we will make it work. And it worked. It's never stopped. It, it's been amazing. So it's like, you know, he has two kids, you know, so it's kind of mm-hmm. scary to come in. But I said, we'll make it work. And my partner didn't come full time until last year, um, August 20, 2019. And I, the same thing. I said, listen, there is no promise. If we were to compute the numbers now, they would not make sense. But I think that with two people calling clients and two people doing meetings, um, and, you know, I think we can make it. And we, we've done it. I mean, this year, January 2020, uh, it's, it was the, the, the best month we've ever had. And this year looks like, even with COVID-19, it will be the best year we've ever had. 
Um, it's just, you know, faith, a lot of faith. Uh, the office went from me, Julio, Marcos. Uh, we hired uh, Lin Chuan Me from China in Becky Chen, our interior designer, recently, actually. Um, and then we have our belly. So we are about seven people now. <clears throat> and what has been the greatest challenge for you of actually running a business? The greatest challenge? Um, it's, uh, I'm choosing now between my passion as a designer to sort of say, okay, I can bring in the money. I can bring in the clients. So I should probably stop babysitting projects and focus on client management and project acquisition. I still review all the drawings. No drawings come out of this office without me reviewing them. But um, <clears throat> I have, and it wasn't hard, actually. It, it, it was just me telling myself, okay, Darwin, there's people here just as talented or more talented than you. Let's edify them. And, you know, that's what they want to do. And you can run, run, run the business side. So my partner is all detail oriented. Coolio is probably the best designer I have ever worked with. Um, and so we jump ideas off of each other and I do enough design to fulfill that part. But I really love the client management, project acquisition, uh, you know, also going to schools and teaching little kids about architecture and things like that, sort of, you know, being rooted in the community. Um, so I spent a lot of time outside and inside. So I like that. that but that was a ch- it's, it was the challenge of saying, well, you are an architect, but that doesn't mean you have to be drawing twenty four seven. You know, you can you can do other things. Mm. <clears throat> now, in terms of finances, getting everything to work, do you have an office now? Are you guys still working out of your homes? Tell me about that. What's your overhead? You mentioned in our LinkedIn conversation, you've managed to be very lean. What are the overheads that you've had to pay for? So we moved from my basement to an office um, in 2018 when we first got that job, that project for the dental office. We immediately moved. It was just things were not going to work out with my wife if I stayed there. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> so that office, um, it was a good deal. It was like a dollar per square foot. So it was not much. And the office is 800 square feet. So it's about 800 bucks. They increased it a little bit. They increased it every year. But um so that was very, very, you know, we could do that. Um, or biggest overhead is probably the same for everybody. It's the, the, you know, paying people, the salaries and things like that. Um, but we didn't have to take any loans. We didn't have to, you know, me and my partner didn't even have to take much money out of our pockets. Like, you know, I had a computer. He had a computer. You know, we all had lap- laptops and things like that from school. So that's how we started. <clears throat> and now everybody has computers from Flow that we purchased. Um, and every everybody has a nice desk. We kind of got in custom made and things like that, um, little by little. But it's because uh, mostly because none of our clients have been dissatisfied with us. They're all, you know, I can't say that there's one that, that doesn't like us. They all like us. They all email us. They all uh, send those greeting cards during Christmas and things like that. And we do the same with them. So we've kept a really good relationship with our clients. Um, and if, if they don't have repeat work, cause how many houses are, do you gonna, are you going to do for one person, right? So if they don't have a lot of repeat work, they always recommend us. Um, <clears throat> so that, that has kept us going. We haven't had to use any sort of sophisticated softwares for bookkeeping and things like that. We use ADP for payroll and just a Excel sheet that my partner and I came up with, really, a pretty good Excel sheet that he has a background in kind of accounting um, so he likes the numbers and details and things like that. Um, I'm always big picture and I'm always the guy that tests things. And if they're no intuitive, I would say, no, that's not going to work. Let's, let's make it very intuitive and very simple. <clears throat> so we kind of compute what comes in and what comes out. I think you shared in one of your emails, something like that about cash flow. And, it, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, that looks like what we did. <laughs> we did it ourselves. So it's a pretty good, uh, you know, process of what comes in, when it was paid and when it's overdue and things like that. Um, and we, we've kept it, kept everything lean. We don't buy something unless we absolutely need it. And when we buy it, we make sure we do a good investment. I I look for coupons too, all the time for everything, for computers, for, you know, I do want my team to always have top of the line computers. Um, I'm a, you know, I, I loved making, you know, V-Ray renderings with 3ds Max and I like that stuff. 
So I want everybody to have a computer that if I want to jump in and make a rendering, I can get it done, you know, without any problem. So <clears throat> the AIA membership comes in handy for that because they have a discount for AIA members with Dale, which I use every time. <laughs> Um, mm. and my partner also keeps me, you know, in the loop because if it was up to me, you know, this office will have <laughs> all kinds of great gadgets, but I, I'm like, okay, we don't need it yet. No laser cutter yet. No laser, you know, no 3d printers. Okay. Um, but everybody has what they need, you know, exactly what they need. <clears throat> and that's, that's been the way, the way that we've kept things going. Um, or bottom line at, at some point was only two thousand dollars a month when we first started and it went up you know uh as we hire more people but also the yeah point. how many staff do you have right now like total so we're seven <clears throat> so seven full-time so full uh three of them are students so they can't really be full-time even if they wanted to it's just really hard okay. but four of us are full-time right four <clears throat> full-time and uh yep three students and what's your what's your monthly revenue, if you don't mind me asking? It varies. Um, so I think on average it's about thirty five thousand, thirty thirty thousand dollars every month. Um, we have some tough months too, um, and the most we've done is about forty five thousand in one month. Uh, okay. To me, that's that's like incredible. I could have never dreamed doing that before. I mean, to other firms, that's nothing. But to me, that was like, oh, my gosh. When we ended last year, I was really excited because, you know, it just showed that if you put in the work, you'll get it back. You know, it's, it's, it's just really exciting. When we filed taxes this year and I saw the numbers, I was like, oh, my gosh, we even have profit. I, we should have spent that money on computers. <laughs> we should have bought a truck. So yeah, so d does that mean that you're actually making money? You're drawing a salary yourself, Darwin? Yes, I am. I'm I'm a W-2, just like everybody else, and I pay myself hourly. Uh, my partner also pays himself hourly, um, just like, you know, everybody else. And we kind of look at what people bring in the table, you know, to appraise um, everybody's value. Um, same thing for me. You know, we even do reviews, me and my partner. We look at each other's faces and say, okay, you know, how, how are we doing? And we, we kind of, uh, we like to quantify everything, you know, amount of projects, profit, how long did it take you to do it? How, how satisfied is the client? And then we kind of tell each other, okay, you know, that was, that was good. And, you know, I myself tell him, Hey, listen, I need a race, buddy. <laughs> and we sit down on the table and discuss it and, and make sure that we can afford it. Cause we're not going to bankrupt the company either. You know, that's not the point. <clears throat> And how are things shaking out with the current situation right now with sheltering in place? Are you seeing your, your workflow being impacted at all? So it has been impacted quite a bit. Um, the seven people that we are here at the office, only I, I come to the office still. And my partner still comes to the office, too. even though we're not a, a essential business, like we should actually be working from home. But my house is about four minutes from here. So I, I, I just I just come here. Um, we keep the doors locked so nobody else come in. But um, but the other ones are working from home, and we never, you know, we never thought that this was going to last that long <clears throat> or anything like that. So we weren't really prepared. We were not prepared to do remote work, anyways. We like to work face to face with everybody. We like the team environment. Um, but for the, it's been awesome though. I can't really complain. Um, you know, I email something to Julio, I get the email back, the job's done, things I review, I, I mark things up, scan them, send it over to him, send it to the clients. We've been using Zoom quite a bit now to meet with clients. They've liked it. I, I love Zoom too. It's, it's amazing. So um, that has been great. Uh, the one thing that has changed is we always just pick up checks or get checks mailed and our office being closed, the mail guy couldn't come in. So we had to go to the post office, but sometimes the mail guy had the, the checks in, in his car. So that was tough. So we had to kind of uh, start doing credit cards too. So we were like, well, listen, we have to have cash all the time as soon as possible. So we started using um, PayPal. I think it is now that we're using and just to, to make sure that there's not a lag on payments coming in, you know, so that, that has been a new thing because some clients just, Oh no, I don't want to see anybody. I don't, I'm not sending checks. I'm not coming out of my house. I'm just staying home. 
But it's like, well, we did the job. <laughs> we got to get paid, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So how do you, how do you, how did the, the amount you pay your staff compared to other firms in the area, <clears throat> you guys on, on the low side, you guys pay pretty well. Where are you at with that? So I think we're kind of in the middle. Um, I would say, um, well, I, I'm sure I make a lot less than all, all the principals uh, as any other office. And it's because I, you know, I just take what I need. And my salary is just what I believe is fair for me that I need um, to not struggle. Um, and same thing for my partner. I mean, we really should make twice what we make, you know. But we make sure our team does get what they need to get. Um, and anytime they've had any struggles in life or anything that they feel that they deserve, we'll sit down and we talk about it. and. They've gotten, everybody has gotten races more than they probably would have ever gotten in any other office because that's our promise. As we grow and we improve and we're faster, better, stronger, everybody's going to get something. You know, I'm not, I'm not building a mansion for me, you know. So benefits that they need, most of them don't even need some, you know, health insurance because their spouses have them and things like that. So we offer all of these things and they're like, well, we don't, we don't need it. I'd rather just have the cash. So we just give the money and pay them. Um, but everybody does know that we're kind of a family. Anything anybody needs, just talk about it with me or Marcos, and, you know, and we'll be very friendly about it. We'll be, uh, because that's how, that was one thing, the humane part that some offices didn't have where I worked. It, it wasn't like humans. It was more like robots, you know? So I'm like, you know, Julio says, hey, uh, my daughter, my, my wife's going to give birth. I'm like, no questions about it. Go, you're taken care of. Don't, not even, don't, it's all, it, it's just, I get it. I had a daughter too, I, three kids I have. Mm-hmm. So I get it. So that's like, you know, anytime anybody has any family or personal matter, we never look, look bad with anger. Oh, you get, it didn't get done. We call our clients and say, listen, we have a little situation here. We're, we're seven people and we re- rely on each other. We have a mitigation plan, which is I'm going to jump in and do it. but uh, Or somebody's going to jump in and do it. But <clears throat> these things happen and they've all been very friendly. But family first, really, family first. And, and I know a lot about it because I wasn't raised by my mom or my dad. So I was, I would, you know, family is it's something that it's our core, you know. And just being kind. You know, me and my partner always talk, Marcos, Marco says, I don't know. Is, is it so hard to just be nice? Like, come on, you know, just be, they, they need, they need time off. They have finals at school. Like, you know, they, they need it. Um, it's, it's, there's not, there's not, no rocket science. And, and that's how we treat our clients. That's how, you know, we expect to be treated. Um, we're on the friendlier side, I would say, with, with a lot of things. <clears throat> okay. What would you say is, is the, what's your biggest challenge right now running a business? <clears throat> Um, well, for other reasons, uh, unrelated to, to the business, I would say I've had personal matters that have come up, you know, in my, in my, in my life that, um, are distracting me a lot. Um, and I haven't been able to figure out how to manage. It's just new things. Like I'm going through a divorce right now, have nothing to do with mm-hmm. flow. It's just, it really have nothing to do with flow. It has to do with timing of a lot of events my father passed away last year um so during that time a lot of things hit me hard um i was very crazy about protecting flow 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 to some extent and then because of all of this thing happened i realized that flow is a grown baby and doesn't really need me you know so i have taken time off and things just keep going my partner keeps you know bills bills keep getting paid clients keep paying so we've learned that we are, you know, even now with COVID-19, we, we're, we're okay. I mean, the beginning of the month, we were just looking at finances today and, and we're okay. So it's just in my life, I'm just 31 years old, but I'm going through, you know, personal things that I don't know how to balance yet or how to understand. I don't think anybody would know how to balance, you know, go through a divorce and, and things like that and take care of the kids and, you know, things like that. So, um, but the office itself we've we've managed to make it uh almost autopilot um which is actually the name of a program that one of our clients runs it's called autopilot it's how to flip properties he teaches that class and it's really like an autopilot system i mean you don't you don't do much (laughs) you just fill in the blanks so we kind of run our office like that we have a process 
step by step process. Everybody knows how to, you know, existing conditions. You know what you need to do, what you're looking for. You know, design. You know what you do. You know the concept. You, every step. Everybody knows the four step process. Um, even from writing a proposal, like everybody here has been exposed to how to write a fee pr- proposal and all that stuff, because there's no secrets. So that has helped a lot. Um, mm. Being able, I, I'm the guy that <laughs> my partner laughs because I'm always saying we should create a process about that. <laughs> we have mm. a process for everything. It's like listen, because I always go back to my first job in the United States. It was at Wendy's restaurant. It happens to be the same type of job that my partner had. He had it at McDonald's. So we were kind of rivals without knowing. Um, so they could make a burger very simply. Anybody could make those burgers. And it's very, very simple, you know. And they watch a little video for an hour or whatever, and they know how to do it. 14-year-old kids are doing it. So we've empowered everybody afloat to sort of understand, okay, here's the process. And anywhere where there is bumps i've been very good at seeing when there's bumps when things are not going smooth um and i've been good at letting them know they can tell me you know hey let me know you know if you're taking too long doing that details probably something's wrong with the process so we have to figure out how to fix it um and i've been very good at that so we have um once a month something we call organization day and it is all the stuff that has bothered us for the entire month um or things that we want to build up uh, that have been kind of stuck, uh, like pro- templates, Revit templates, or financial templates, or, or handbooks, or you know things that we didn't know. We make teams of one or two, and me and my partner oversee it, and then we do presentations at the end of the day. It's like a charrette, ch- and then we grab it and say, "Okay, let's do it." We've done a lot of, uh, for instance, basements, apartments have become a thing. Everybody wants to finish their apartment and turn it into a livable unit. A lot of people. I mean, we've got, we, we get those uh, all the time. I mean, we just finished like three of them today. Like the drawings were stamped today. And uh, we're like, okay, well, we're doing that so much. We might as well create a process as to how to do it. What are the steps? And, you know, what are the different things that the owner needs to know about zoning, zoning bylaws or some, some rules or regulations that, you know, that, that they don't know. And one of our interns, I wouldn't call her an intern. She's an emerging designer, um, came up with a checklist and we tested it and it's, it works well. There were some things to fix. We fixed them, and it's smooth. So now anybody that comes to Flow can do an apartment, a, a basement apartment. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I will review it, look at it, and I'm looking for the same items they're looking at. So, it's, you know, do we have all those elements covered? You know, the life safety elements, egress windows. Do we have all those things? So um, I have I have faith that we keep doing that sort of module very efficient. Uh, sort of, you know, we, we narrow down or focus so that we can be very effective within that, you know. Mm. And that's when we design, really. Like, that's when we have fun, okay? Everything else covered, now let's have fun with this, you know. Um, we do design options all the time, and all of them within the parameter of this is the very efficient way of doing it. How can we make mm. it better and more and more cool? Um, you know, I happen to be a geek. I used to teach Revit, uh I still teach Revit and softwares at the Boston Architectural College. So I always like to create bundles of things that, you know, here's your master bedroom, buddy. Boom. All done. Parametric. Ready to go. So and that's how I think at the office a lot. <clears throat> and how do you guys find your the majority of your projects? What's your project acquisition strategy? Um, so we do everything that, that we can do. So uh, social media... We do it. Uh, we've gotten at least two projects from Instagram. Um, we opened our Instagram last year, mm. March, March last year. It was one of the emerging designers that I said to her, what do we need? And she said, well, you don't have an Instagram account. You don't exist. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So we got like two of those from there. Uh, we, we sometimes go to a credit list just randomly. But I think that the key has been and it's just luck, I think. Finding people, and I call them uh, like I think Max Maxwell Maxwell is the name of the guy that wrote the Tipping Point and a few other books. He he calls it like some people that are influencers within the community or mavens. So I found by luck a few people that just have a unlimited outreach. It's just you know unlimited. 
Um, mm. And they, yeah. they just bring, for instance, this uh, Peter Solaris, that's his, uh, the name of one of our best clients, really. Uh, he runs a show called Flipping Boston, and he flips properties throughout, and he teaches classes about how to flip properties. Um, and he has all of these developers and investors that work with him. And now he's just saying, my buddy Darwin at Flo can help you with that. And it's just calls come in. I mean, to, to this morning at seven o'clock, one of them just called me. Hey, I have a property. You know, you want to take a mm. look? I'm like, sure. So they keep coming. And we found a few of those, um, you know, sort of mavens, I think is what they call them. But I think it's just a Raven fan, you know, like that loves us. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and they just know a lot of people within the community and they just boom. But we keep doing everything else. We keep doing social media. We keep doing uh, blogs. We keep writing about uh general things not just about us but you know things in the industry or whatever uh articles we go to schools and middle schools and daycares and help you know kids learn about architecture um and we just find these people how do you how do you manage to do all this and still get the work done darwin that's that sounds like a lot to do um yeah i well i guess we 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 just we, we schedule it so we have a schedule for article we, we write an article of importance i call it some sort of article that is itching in me that i have to write so i put it every month by the 14th we try to write it it doesn't happen all the time but we we write it <clears throat> and we write a list of all those articles month by month for instance in january we wrote the list of the entire year of the articles that we wanted to touch upon and if something becomes more important for instance like COVID 19 right how do we deal with that so we write one and then move that to the next year the next one um events we want to be involved in the community so whenever we see an event coming up that we did last year we already have a schedule so we already know we're going to be there so you know everything is already scheduled within within um within our time and drawings for instance if we're going to deliver a set of drawing by friday i always tell my team have it ready by like tuesday for me so that I can review it and pile them all up. So I have a corner where it's all the drawings that need to be reviewed are ready to go. I have them all piled up there, ready to go. And I just put my headphones, listen to music and review all the drawings and they, you know, they, they go out in the same way. So we've been very efficient. And I think Marcos keeps me going because my mind is all over the place, but Marcos, my partner, kind of keeps me focused. <laughs> he keeps me going. It's like, okay, Darwin, what's important now? You know, you got you to gotta win. What's important now? That's what you need to think about. <laughs> So um, I do that, um, and I've learned a lot from the other firms because when I was at other offices, I I saw things that weren't so great and the things that were great, and I picked them up too. So um, you know, I'm here late because I want to. Honestly, sometimes I'm here late at work, and it's it's not because I I need to. It's you know I I enjoy my office. I like this place that I call home. Uh, but it's not because I have deadlines that are crazy. Nobody really stays here too late at all actually it's incredible i never really thought about it but the norm is people live on time they have kids they just live on time well darwin thank you for sharing us uh, with us the story of starting and growing your architecture firm well done thank you so much and you know i'm glad to be here and always uh always a fan forever you know and that's a wrap today's episode is sponsored by smart practices the world's leading step-by-step business training program that's helped more than 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of business doesn't get in the way of their architecture. Because you see, it's not your architecture or design skills that's holding you back. It's the complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.